Hello and welcome to Module 3 VLANs. So please don't forget to take notes and submit them when you're all done. All right, so um, in the beginning, what I want to do is I briefly describe the definition of what a local area network is. So I want you to write all of these notes and let me go over them one by one so you'll know exactly what we're talking about. So what is a virtual LAN? So the first thing you need to know, maybe we should describe what a physical LAN is. So a physical LAN, remember you type in all of these down, is when all the ports, here, let's take a look at this, which I wrote one up in um, Packet Tracer. So when you have all the ports on the switch are in the same LAN because they are in the same broadcast domain, which means if anybody sends a frame to any of these ports, what, do, what does the switch do? That means the switch is going to transmit this broadcast frame to all the ports. So all these ports are in the same local area network, same broadcast domain. By default, all of these ports are, um, by default, all these ports are members of VLAN 1. So inside the switch, this is known as VLAN 1, virtual lot, uh, virtual local area network number one. It's virtual because software is what controls the broadcast domain inside. The word software or logical means uh, broadcast domain, means a LAN. Uh, software is the one that looks at the destination um, MAC address, and if it sees it's all ones, it will send it to all everybody in here, all of these ports, software wise. So therefore, the switch is one broadcast domain. Now, what we could do is, is we can split this switch software-wise into multiple VLANs. For example, let's say I take the first six ports and I'll make VLAN 2. I'll create VLAN 2 and take these six ports from VLAN 1 and move them into VLAN 2. So I'll have two switches, one switch with... Um, 18 ports and another VLAN with six ports. So VLAN one will have 18 ports left in it and VLAN two will have six ports in it. So it's like having two switches with one with six ports and one with 18 ports. In fact, if I want more ports, I can take more ports and make VLAN two have eight ports or 10 ports, right? So you can increase and decrease the number of ports in local area now and you can create multiple virtual switches software switches logical right so you can create as many as you can really in here the more but you got to have a lot of ports stuff i mean so um that's why the flexibility of a virtual LAN. so we'll think of a virtual LAN from now on is really a virtual switch so this is really nothing but a whole bunch of ports and you can split it up into multiple switches multiple virtual switches Okay, so that's what this whole thing describes. So please write all of this down so you'll fully understand what a virtual LAN is. So a virtual LAN is uh, a virtual switch within a physical switch, and you can take ports in and out. All right? All right, so um, now that you have written all of this down, we can continue with our notes, with our um, uh, PowerPoints presentation. All right, so moving on, what are the benefits of having a VLAN? So let's go over that for now. All right, so this is the physical LAN. Each switch is VLAN one, have their own, but we don't want three different switches for three LANs. What we're going to do is we're going to have one big switch, and we're going to create VLANs in there, right? So what are the benefits of VLAN? Please write these down, at least the benefit. You don't have to write the description. Better performance, that means you're going to have better speed and smaller broadcast domains. Smaller broadcast domains will allow you to access uh, or uh, access your resources much quicker. And by the way, each VLAN will have its own subnet. So when we were doing subnetting last semester, uh, each subnet will be for their own VLAN. Okay, so at layer three, you give them a subnet. At layer two, you that subnet will all the users in that subnet will be on their own VLAN, right? So that's at layer two, and at layer one, the physical layer is when you connect the devices together. 
So think of it, you know, so think about this. All our Cisco courses that we're taking, we're really at the bottom three layers of the OSI model. Three, two, and one, where we design our land, the infrastructure of how data will travel from one place to another, from one local area to another. So better performance, that means you get a better speed because you have smaller domain, a smaller broadcast domain. You will also have better security, right? You, will, you are combining users together that have similar um, tasks. For example, uh, faculty access to the same resources. Students will access, you know, they're the same resource. Engineering, engineering have different applications and devices that they may need access that the salespeople don't. So if you are a salesperson, you'll be in a sales VLAN and so on. All right. And this way it makes it, it's a lot easier to manage. All right. Um, types of VLAN that are out there. So let me describe each one of those. Let's talk about the native, uh, first of all, the default VLAN. All right. So write this down. Default, default VLAN is VLAN 1. All ports are members of VLAN 1. I want you to write this down. You don't have to look up here. Just listen to what I'm telling you, and we'll take one by one. All right? So let me repeat again. The default VLAN is VLAN number one, and all the ports are members of VLAN 1 by default. Right? That's If you remove ports from another VLAN, let's say you have created several VLANs, uh, VLAN 1 will always be there. Uh, if you remove any ports from the other VLANs, they all go back home, and home is VLAN 1, right? Um, the name VLAN 1 cannot be renamed, modified, or deleted, all right? It will always be there. And all the ports are members of VLAN 1. You have an additional four VLANs, by the way, created by default, but we're never going to use these. These are legacy. So if you ever ask how many VLANs are created by default the answer is five one two three four five and one is the really the one that we are going to be using and you get this by the way type in show vlan or show vlan brief all right uh the second vlan that you need to know is the native well let's talk about the data vlan data vlan is dedicated to user traffic only right we can write this right here and vlan one is set up by default to be the data VLAN, all right? Um, now let's talk about the native VLAN. The native VLAN, which we'll talk about in a few minutes about tagged and untagged frames, incoming untagged frames from a trunk will be sent into the native VLAN. By default, VLAN 1 is the native VLAN. Anyone traveling on the trunk, when you connect, trunk is when you're connecting two switches together and each physical switch has multiple VLANs in it, so the trunk is carrying frames to the multi, to one of the VLANs on the other switch. So every frame that is traveling on the trunk will have a tag, tag telling them which VLAN he is going to. So anyone traveling on the trunk from the native VLAN will not be tagged. So anybody's leaving the native VLAN is not going to be tagged. All right, Na VLAN one is always the native. So anybody leaving VLAN one will be untagged. Okay, you can change that, by the way. You can change that to some other VLAN. Both ends of the trunk must be configured with the same VLAN. That's very important to know. All right, management VLAN, which we did on the last, um, I think the last lecture, if I'm not mistaken. The management VLAN is any member of the management VLAN, any port, any PC, will be able to Telnet or SSH into the, uh, into the, into the switch to configure it. And we have something called the voice VLAN. The voice VLAN will have to be set separately, completely separately, because it requires a short bandwidth. You want to guarantee them bandwidth, quality of service, you know, set priority to the packets, to the frames that are leaving the voice VLAN. And you want to make sure that they have low latency delay, that is. All right, so write all of that down. Now, what is a trunk? Um, with a multi layer, I'm sorry, with a trunk, a trunk is when you have multiple VLANs. You have VLAN 10, 20, 30. So when, when somebody from VLAN 10 wants to send data to VLAN 10 on the other hand, on the other side, on the other switch, he sends the frame to here, and then the trunk, and you will tag it. 
with number 10. And as it travels, when it gets to here, the switch three will see the tag number 10, removes the tag, and he knows he has to send it here. Right? That's what tagging. And the tagging is according to the 802.1Q standard. All right? So that's what the... Now, if you are coming out of VLAN 1, you don't get no tag. So when it gets to here, anything that's on tag goes to the native VLAN, VLAN 1. All right? So that's what the trunk is for. So, right, this definition, the trunk is a point-to-point -point connection between two switches. It allows the same VLANs on different switches to communicate with each other. Every frame getting on the trunk must be tagged with the VLAN number so that the receiving switch knows which what VLAN to send the frame to. The tagging is done according to the IEEE 802.1Q standard. All right, so please write what I just said. If you don't have a trunk, then you'll need a dedicated connection between the switches, which we don't really want. The trunk is the best way to go. This is the old legacy connection. Remember, you will still need a layer three device to allow the, the, to allow the VLANs to communicate with each other. These are layer two switches. So when you're sending a frame, you're only sending it to the, the same VLAN on the other side. You cannot send frames from one VLAN to the other. It's like they are physically in two different switches. We can't do that. You need a layer three because layer two switches only inspect the MAC addresses. They don't know which network you belong to. You need a layer three device to enable you to get to the other side. All right, so you still need a layer three device such as a layer three router, a router or a layer three, um, a layer three device, uh, a, a layer three switch. All right, so this is the tag. This is where you insert the tag. We'll get into that. We'll talk about that more in class. This is the tagging, and we'll talk about that also in class again. Uh, we talked about the VLAN tagging, uh, and this is how you would. We'll do that in an example when we do our packet tracer. All right, when it comes to configuration, we don't have to get into really the configuration itself because we will do that um, in our next video. I will, we will create a packet tracer where we'll go over on how to create VLANs and have them communicate with each other. All right, so um, we will do, and I'll show you all the commands that we do on the next video. Uh, so please write down everything that I asked you to. And, oh, just one thing to remember before we are all done. One thing. Uh, we'll talk about the v voice VLANs. Um, how do you change? Uh, I just want to delete VLANs. That's very important. So here are the steps. Please write the following down. Number one, you remove all the ports from the VLAN. You type the command, no VLAN space, the number, whatever the VLAN number is. Let's say VLAN 10. Step number three, you delete the flash colon vlan.dat or, or delete the vlan.dat command. And then you have to reload. All right, so those are the steps on how to get rid of a vlan. You got to do this step right in here. Uh, when you're doing this step, delete flash colon vlan.dat, make sure you write vlan.dat. If you just type delete flash and you forget to type vlan.dat, you're deleting the whole flash. And that includes the operating system. Big problem. Be very careful doing that. All right. All right. And uh, we'll talk about. And uh, all right. So the configuration of the trunk. We will do that also in our next video when we are doing the packet tracer um, video. So write everything that I asked you to write up and upload that as your homework. And I'll see you on the next video.